This video is brought to you by patreon.com slash worst take. Get access to exclusive live streams and Discord servers, on-screen shout outs, and early access to some videos when you join now. Help make sure that we can continue to make content like this by supporting the Patreon. Links are in the description down below. All right, so let's talk about the Cleveland Browns offensive line. And I want to do this without just falling into an easy narrative, right? The easy narrative for talking about the Browns offensive line right now is basically blaming it on the exodus of Bill Callahan, who's coaching in Tennessee right now. And the general narrative is that Bill Callahan was the glue holding this offensive line together. Once he left the offensive line, um, went to garbage and you could see that in how the line is playing and if you're only paying attention to how the browns are playing i think that narrative makes a ton of sense you're watching this offensive line if you depending on how closely you've been watching you probably were living off of that 2020 browns offensive line narrative and and reputation that this team had for having a good offensive line. And then you watch this offensive line this year and you're shocked. And then you find out that the offensive line coach in 2020 is no longer the offensive line coach in 2024. It's very reasonable how a lot of people get here. The only issue with that narrative for me is that if you look at the Tennessee Titans, where Bill Callahan and Brian Callahan are coaching right now, they are the 28th worst pass blocking offensive line according to pro football focus, the Browns are 29th. They're basically identical levels of bad. And if you look at Tennessee's offensive line, they've invested in that offensive line recently, right? More so than you can argue the Cleveland Browns had. Um, they spun a third round pick on Lloyd Cushenberry, Peter Skoranek, one of their tackles was a 11th overall pick in the first round. J.C. Latham was the seventh overall pick in this year's draft. Um, Dylan Reduns was a second round pick, pick 53 here, right? They've invested a ton in this offensive line. And even with Bill Callahan, that offensive line is struggling. That's not to say Bill Callahan's not good at his job. It's just the impact that we're seeing with the Browns offensive line and how bad they're playing are far past the scope of what you would blame a position coach for. Like, this has more to do, in my opinion, of the fact that Wyatt Teller has been regressing consistently since 2020. Um, Joe Batonio has been regressing consistently since 2022. Jed Wills is not even recognizable anymore from who he was in 2020. The center position has gotten worse, and Jack Conklin has regressed due to having two season-ending injuries in that time span. He's clearly not the same athlete he was, and obviously all of these guys are much older in 2024 than they were in 2020. It's just not 2020 anymore for the Cleveland Browns in the offensive line, and I think that explains why they're not playing well because when I watch them on film, especially like in the run game, which used to be the Browns' bread and butter, it doesn't look like to me an offensive line that is misguided. It looks like an offensive line that struggles to execute consistently because these guys just aren't as good as they used to be. That's the sad truth about this Browns offensive line. What they need to do instead of worrying about like firing the offensive line coach, and you could do that. I don't know how much change that's really going to make to the situation. Like if you ran it back, you could bring back Bill Callahan. Um, but if you ran back this offensive line next year, you're going to stink. This is why I was really pushing hard for the Browns to go heavy in the offensive line during the 2024 draft. I was pushing for that pretty much throughout the whole process. Browns should draft the center. Brown should draft the guard. Brown should draft the tackle. They only drafted the guard. I was very disappointed in how they operated in the draft. And I think this is showing you what that bred you. I think they had more confidence in this offensive line holding up and not aging than what was warranted when you look at it. Because if you've been watching this offensive line closely since 2021, this offensive line has been just dipping, 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 dipping. And even in 2021, they weren't as good as they were in 2020. So, that, to me, I think is the proper explanation of what's going on. Bill Callahan leaving, 
not leaving, I don't think that changes what we're seeing today. Um, what does change what we see today is the fact that Joe Batonio is close to retirement age, that Wyatt Teller has regressed, that uh, that Wyatt Teller has been regressing since 2021, even under Bill Callahan, that um, Jack Conklin looks like a dude who's had two season ending knee surgeries, um, that your center is simply not as good as J.C. Treader was in 2020, and that your left tackle situation is developmental right now with DeWan Jones being out there because Jed Wills is unrecognizable from who he was in 2020. Now let's focus in on the run blocking. I brought up the example that the Browns and the Titans, they're pretty much identically bad offensive lines right now, despite Bill Callahan being there in Tennessee. Um, and it's even true when you look at the run game. The Browns are the 29th run blocking offensive line in all of football, um, and the Tennessee Titans are the 30th. What that means to me, the reason I want to make this point clear isn't to dunk on Bill Callahan or people who like Bill Callahan. The reason I want to make this point clear is if you think the Browns issues have to do with them changing an offensive line coach, you're going to be more likely to ignore the fact that these players on this offensive line, not just like the one or two guys you don't like, pretty much all need to be swapped out, right? Like Joe Batonio, it's time. Wyatt Teller, it's looking like time. And who knows how much time Jack has. He's actually playing well. But still, it looks like you're going to have to speed this thing up and you're going to have to move some new pieces in and out because center is not good right now, left guard is not good right now, and right guard is woefully inconsistent. That's the heart of this Browns offensive line. This is a player-based problem. Now, does that mean that Andy Dickerson's doing a great job? I don't know. But what I do know is that the Browns' failures on the offensive line seem to be more in scope with the players not executing more so than something you would blame a offensive line coach for, in my opinion. And I think the most evidence of this is in the Browns run blocking. When you look at their run blocking, when you look at what goes wrong, what goes right in the run blocking, it's not dissimilar to what happens in the pass game, but it's more pronounced. So let's take a look at it. Like here's an example of Dewan Jones just outright failing on run blocking. Right here. He's on Khalil Mack, 52 in white, and he just doesn't pin him down. Dewan Jones has to pin him down. I understand it's Khalil Mack. But look at the size difference, right? Khalil Mack gets a hand in his chest. He gets a nice push, and then he allows, Dewan allows Khalil Mack to long arm him, which allows Khalil Mack to get a free release. Well, not a free release, but an easy release off of him. That cannot happen. Dewan Jones needs to get his hands into chest and drive his ass out the play. Because if you drive him out the play, right, then this play has a chance to succeed because Nick Chubb is going to be one-on-one. -on -one with this linebacker and who knows what can happen there or he can cut around. Like there are multiple paths for success here in run blocking. Well, in the run play, if you take care of that assignment, but allowing Khalil Mack to get past you with that level of ease does not allow this run play to even develop or have a chance to be successful. Like Ethan Polsick and Joel are double teaming on uh, what is that tier tart? 95? No, no, no. That's Puna Ford 95. Tier Tart's 90. Uh, so, like, they're doing what they're supposed to do. Because what you don't want to do is run Puna Ford into a rush lane. Dewan has to pin him down, right? Dewan has to figure out how he's going to get him pinned down. Either, and I think the way you can pin him down, right, is pushing this way. So that that lane can be created, you create a hole here for Nick Chubb. Maybe he loses this linebacker in that hole because this linebacker decides to go wide. Again, you give the play a chance to be successful here. It's not guaranteeing success, but when you don't win convincingly like that, I mean, the play is dead. All right, let's look at the second play here. This is more of an example of what you want Dewan to do, right? You see how Dewan moves his guy immediately? Now, he's help blocking, so it's a little bit more expected, but good good push there, moves him out the way, clears out some space. David's got an edge rusher on him. That's a tough assignment to ask him to win straight up, and David doesn't win that one straight up. 
but you still create a little bit of a crease here. Nick Chubb breaks that arm tackle, which he does. Boom. You got a five-yard run on your hands, right? The only thing I would want from DeWan is just finish this play out a little bit stronger, right? I think that's the big issue with DeWan. Sometimes he's super physical. Sometimes he's just relying on size, right? Need him to be physical more often. Because, you know, he should have probably finished that a little bit stronger. He knows it. Look how he's walking off. But look here. All right, DeWan helps out. Boom, push. Nice. Little crease created. You see how that just gives this play, even though the David's not winning that battle, right? He's getting long arm, all that stuff. Still does enough to create a little bit of a lane. Nick Chubb breaks the arm tackle. And who knows if the one finishes this block better. And look, the zero is a really good player for the Chargers. Look at that. I mean, like, that's strong back right there. Like, <laughs> we got to give respect where respect's due. I can't do nothing but respect the man that takes 400 pounds and just eats it like that that's crazy look at that shit by the way the browns need a linebacker that does something like that that's crazy okay <laughs> wow just eats it dude yeah yeah great job by zero here but you want dewan to win that battle obviously it's linebacker on your biggest player you gotta win that battle get low do whatever you need to right i think you just relying on sides you ain't think he was gonna be strong like that and maybe if you were playing penn state you could move him off the ball like that but nah this is the nfl and they apparently this happens this is crazy look at that Ooh. all right third play here joel and dewan need to hit their targets in space oh yeah 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 both of them just straight up miss on this run play just objectively miss here, right? Again, like the the concept here, it should work if they can get to where they need to and make the blocks that they have to block. But you see right here, Joe Batonio, he gets to that second level. The design works, right? Because the design is so Joe can help and then attack the second level to create a hole up, right? So Joel helps, attacks the second level. Nick Chubb takes the cutback. You can see the run play development, right? Because you have it right here. Wyatt Teller out there in front. Now you need Joel to get here. If Joel blocks here, if if Wyatt, I mean, not Joel, if Wyatt blocks here, my bad, and Joel blocks here, you create a seal, and there's a pathway right there for Nick Chubb into the open field unfortunately that does not happen joe batonio does not win his block everybody else does right you can see jack conklin winning his block here wyatt teller wins that block there but joel in space just not the athlete he was he used to be he can't get out there in time he doesn't get a effective enough block you add that on top of ethan Polsick not being able to kind of hold Tier Tart where he's supposed to. You see the push that everybody else is getting, but Tier Tart does not move from the line of scrimmage. So Posick not getting push, Batonio not getting to his spot, and this run play is stopped. That is a player issue. That last play we talked about, Joel and Dewan not doing a good job in space. This is an example of them playing well in space. And when they play well in space, and they do what they're supposed to do. These run schemes usually work, right? This is an example of that. And again, this is against one of the best defenses in the NFL. Joe Batonio, Dewan Jones, watch him on your left side. You see here, they're going to run the motion to try to move the linebackers out the gap. That didn't work. But Posick and Batonio do a good job, double team. Push, seal the gap, help Posick out. That gives Posick the edge he needs to turn him out. Dewan Jones does what he didn't do against Khalil Mack earlier. You see how he just gets a hand, boom, foot, turn, push, right? That's exactly what you want to see out of Dewan. And then since Posick got the push he needed from Joel to be able to win that block and get a different angle, Joel is now on the second level. He takes care of that linebacker. Nick Chubb does a great job of using these blocks, right? Because he kind of plays that block so that Joel gets another good angle at it. And then he gets to go head on with 32. And boom, he breaks a tackle. He gets an extended run. 
That is the run play working as planned. Like the Browns aren't doing anything in a run game terribly different than what they used to do. It's just that they're not as consistent at executing it. It's the problem, right? There are plays like this where Joe Batonio gets out there, boom, he's he's moving ass. Um, there are plays like this where Joe Batonio gets out there and he can't move ass. The inconsistencies are just piling up here. And one, David does not do a good job of winning on the outside here on that. Was that a 5T? No, that's not even 5T. That's not wide. No, that's not not wide. That's 5T. All right. So it doesn't do good there winning that block. Let's him blow by a little bit fast, right? If you're David, that you don't, you can't have that happen. And that getting blown up kills this run play. Right, because what should be a gap for Nick Chubb to the outside, right, with a seal and then a turn here, should be a nice little gap here for Nick Chubb to either win here or use Cedric Tillman to win here. Instead, Nick Chubb has to cut this up midfield, right, and just take what he can get. Yeah, David, first his hands start super high. You see how he almost gets a hand to the face there? Hands start super high. And he doesn't get enough space. Yeah. Wyatt is there to provide that block to free up the gap. But you see how Nick Chubb can't go around that. But golly, Wyatt. Um, you see how he can't use that because David's guy is closing that lane up. So David's got to do a better job there. Yeah, this little wall here that the Browns are making, that holds up. David's got to hold up better. Yeah, David's got to hold up better there. All right, this one, Puna Ford just blows up right here, all right? Ethan Posick, one-on-one, Puna Ford just straight up blows up. Boom, little rip underneath, just blows it up. Whatever run play you thought you were running, you weren't. All right, these last two plays are where DeWan needs to improve as a run blocker, right? Like, come on. This has to be better than this. Sometimes DeWan is very powerful. Sometimes he lacks to use that strength. This is a bad, this is an example of that. You got to do something to Khalil Mack here, man. I get it. Khalil Mack is not a joke. He's a really, really good football player. But you're not making Khalil Mack expend a ton of energy to beat you, right? Like, this isn't like Khalil Mack is having to be Khalil Mack to beat you. He's just beating you. Easy. Because look how you lurch at him. Well, look how he lurches at him. Not powerful. Feet all together. Gangly. This ain't powerful. And because of that, that cutback lane is not there. So the backside linebacker is able to chase him down. Khalil Mack's not there. Nick Chubb could probably outrun that backside linebacker to that spot. And look at all that space that's there. Another one, Dewan Jones. Watch big number 79. Come on, man. Right? He's got to get better at this. He just misses. He's got to get better or you got to just devise things that don't make him go out in space. David and Joku too. Not a great day for him as a run blocker. Like another one where he just gets beat outright. That's the Browns run game issues, right? Um, if you're looking at run blocking, that's what I think is the issue. Pass blocking, you know, similar things where like there, it's just guys getting beat individually. It doesn't feel like it's schematic to me. I understand why it's easy to point at Bill Callahan and say, hey, man, him being gone, that's really the problem. 
But I think the Browns' issues are a little bit deeper than that. I think they need a personnel change. I think they need to get younger. I think they need to get better, younger players because they're a far cry away from being where they were in 2020. Now, we all have discussed that I think that Andrew Barry, Kevin Stefanski all kind of work together with Jimmy Haslam to bring in Deshaun. And that's a stain that I think they all have to bear as a loss here. But that's one thing. This right here, if he's not able to show signs that this situation will improve sooner than later with some of the young guys on this line, i.e. Dewan Jones and, and uh, Zach Zenter, if there's not like tangible hope that those selections will make a difference for this team going forward, it's going to be the most valid point of criticism of Andrew Barry going into the 2025 offseason and ultimately something that can convince people that he should need to be fired if that's not where people already are. Because this right here was actually kind of avoidable. Now, we'll see how good Mike Hall is. If Mike Hall plays out of his mind or continues playing as well as he is, then it might change the math because you did get a really good player in the second round where you could have also got a tackle. And if the Juan Jones plays well at left tackle, then it justifies your decision to not draft a tackle in the second round when a lot of teams did. And if Zach Zinter works out at guard, then all of a sudden you could take a deep breath and you could feel a lot better about where the Browns are as an offensive line because that's two critical pieces that are replaced, right? Left tackle and right guard, not right guard, left guard, right? You can live with the performance of Wyatt Teller. You can live with the performance of Jack Conklin and you should be able to find a center in free agency or the draft and improve the offensive line tangibly next year, um, especially if Joe Batonio does retire. But this is going to be something to watch because there's a lot of criticism that Andrew Barry gets that I think does not land on the side of fair, but any criticism he's getting about this offensive line right now, um, as much as he was the architect around the successful offensive line that they built in 2020, when he gets full credit for that, that line was bad in 2019 and then great in 2020. He also gets credit for watching that offensive line dismantle itself and not really being proactive about replacing pieces on that offensive line. And that's all really going to be determined how much he did do or did he do enough in that time frame by the performance of Dewan Jones and then less importantly, Zach Zinter, because I don't think we're going to see much of him for the rest of the year um, because he's a rookie and he's behind Joel and he's behind Wyatt. Like if the Browns are going to have to reload here at quarterback and offensive line, they really want to feel confident about the people making those decisions. And I think the development of those two players will sway people's confidence or at least sway the people in the building's confidence in Andrew Barry's ability to do that. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Y'all have a great day. Have a better night. Peace.